Greetings, everyone. I hope you're doing well, and thank you for joining us today from wherever you may be. My name is Steve Romig, and I'm the Education Content Manager here at Claris. Together with my colleagues Doug and Rick, we are thrilled to share our excitement and insights about the latest version of FileMaker, Claris FileMaker 2023. With this updated release, we are expanding the potential of the open platform that FileMaker offers, enabling you to create custom apps that are both high-performing and scalable. Now, we've got a lot of ground to cover, so let's dive right in. I'll be back for the Q&A at the end, but for now, it's my pleasure to introduce our Director of Product Management, Rick Kalman. Rick, the virtual stage is all yours. Thank you, Steve. Hello, I'm Rick Kalman, a Director of Product Management here at Claris, and I'm here to talk about our latest release, Claris FileMaker 2023, which provides you with a more powerful platform which create your custom business apps or solutions. Now, our rapid app development platform builds on the success of FileMaker 19 era to allow you to build business applications faster and better than ever. The new name, FileMaker 2023, we feel better reflects our commitment to continuous improvement and delivery. This naming convention represents our new, more frequent release cadence and should give a better sense of the relative currency of the release versus the FileMaker 19 era, where we iterated on and made significant advancements to the FileMaker platform. But by not changing the version number for almost three years, customers were not aware that we were continuing to advance the platform significantly. Based on customer feedback, FileMaker 2023 includes significant performance, stability, reliability, and security improvements, giving you the confidence in the platform that helps run your critical business operations. Now, we are committed to continuing delivering advancements to the FileMaker platform so that developers can keep iterating and improving their existing applications. For more details on what FileMaker 2023 release entails, I'd like now to hand it over to Douglas Wallace. Thank you, Rick, and hello, everyone. My name is Doug Wallace, and I'm the FileMaker Product Manager at Claris. So first of all, we're going to talk about one of your favorite applications of the Claris platform, which is Claris FileMaker Pro. So in this new version of FileMaker Pro, We've been working both on bringing you new features enhancements to features that you've been using for quite a few years. So the first one is a new script trigger that we've implemented. It's called on Windows transaction. What it's allowing you to do is to log every type of creation, read, update, and delete database transaction uh, that actually occurs when a transaction happens in FileMaker. So we started the work on opening up a bit database transaction inside FileMaker in later version of FileMaker 19 with the idea of giving the developer uh, more power to be able to control what data is being sent uh, across the data stream. And so developers could decide what type of information is validated and so on. And whilst doing that work, we thought that it would be a good idea to actually give you the option to be able to grab some data when introduction occurs. And this is what this script trigger is doing. So when a transaction occurs uh, in FileMaker, you will be able to run a script where we'll basically send some JSON uh, information uh, to the developers. So essentially the information that we are sending out is the uh, name of the, the file that's being used, the table name, the operation that, that happens could be a new, deleted, or modified, the record ID, then after that, a field name uh, where you'll be able to actually uh, inject any type of data that you want to basically use. And so essentially, the idea behind it is to allow you to create a audit logging for your application, but making it as easy as possible for you to be able to actually do it. In the field name uh, being uh, access to the calculation engine, your field could actually have anything. So the calculation of what was there before and the changes, and it's up to you to decide what you want to do. Uh, in order to actually help you better perform basically the task of audit logging, we've also added three new functions to allow you to be able to retrieve more information about field and table references. 
Another one that we have is an enhancement of a feature that has been in Pharmaca for quite a few years. So we've added uh, the option in SendMail to be able to use authentication through a OAuth 2.0 provider. As you might know, Microsoft and Google are now basically deprecated the use of basic basic password being sent as plain text. And so now you're going to be able to you're going to be able to use those services from Microsoft to Google to send emails out of your system. So the option is has been added to the uh, send mail script step, where before you could only use the mail client or the SMTP server. Now you'll be able to actually uh, validate and enter all the information from Google or Microsoft in your system to allow you to actually send emails. This is making sure that security standards across all the platforms are uh, on par. We have an also a new script step called perform script on server with callback. Uh, this is vaguely the same as the uh, perform script on server script step that we have, except that this one is essentially an easy way for the client to be made aware of when the script has been run by the server. So the idea is you will basically send a specific specified script to the server. The client, while the script is running server, can be doing any other task. So you could be moving around your system, creating new file, uh, new uh, uh, records, doing other scripts. And when the script actually finished sending uh, or doing that script, it will send the information back to your client so that it will run a specified script. Uh, as long as you're still connected to the file, you'll be able to actually run that callback script. If you disconnect from the, the script, obviously you won't be able to actually receive that callback script. Uh, and it's, it's actually very nice because if you're running a large script on your system, that way your client can actually keep on doing the work that they have to. We've enhanced some of our security features as well. So now across the platform, we are supporting OpenSSL 3.0.8, just to make sure that everything's really secure. We've extended a function of uh, reading QR code, uh, both on Pharmaca Pro on Windows and for Pharmaca Server for on Windows and Ubuntu. We are now supporting the get life function, get life text function on Pharmaca Server and we've added few new, uh, three new extra languages, which are Japanese, Korean, and Ukrainian. We've made some improvement in the way that generation of PDF elements works on Windows. We're using a new uh, third-party tools for that, making sure that it works better for you and it's quicker. We are supporting dark mode for the relation graph on the Mac OS. We've added uh, the support for date format uh, inside the execute file DTR script step, so it's easier for people that are actually managing languages in different countries to be able to actually sort of manage that. And we've fixed about 500 bugs uh, in, since Pharmaca 19.6. Uh, if you go to our website, you'll be able to actually find a list of uh, most of the bugs that we fixed in the release notes for Pharmaca Pro. And there's also a release notes for Pharmaca Server as well. We've also made a quick update to the stencil that you can use uh, when creating new layouts in Pharmaca Pro. We haven't modified this for quite a few years, so we thought it will be good to actually do it now. We've added the sizes for the new iPhones, as well as sizes for the new iPad Pros and iPad Mini, just to make your life easier when creating uh, apps for Pharmaca Go. So in terms of the uh, tech specs that we support for Pharmaca Pro, uh, for the Mac, we are supporting the latest two versions of Mac OS, being Ventura 13 and Monterey 12. And for Windows, uh, we support Windows 11, Windows 10, both the enterprise and the pro version. In terms of the supported host, uh, Farmaker Pro Solution will be able to uh, work properly uh, when you are running 19.6, uh, 19.5, 19.4.2, and the latest version, uh, Farmaker 2023, where the product version is 20.1. Uh, we'll have support as well for Farmaker Cloud, uh, when we release that in the near future. We're going to get a quick look at Claris Farmaker Server. So a lot of the work that we've been doing over the last few versions of Farmaker was to make sure that the admin console worked for you as developer or the system admin by making sure that it was more reliable, uh, easier to use, and that all the information that you were looking for. So we moved basically from a Java really based environment in Farmaker 16 and uh, with the changes in Pharmaca 17 uh, over the last uh, four or five years, we've been some, doing some heavy improvement to the way the back system actually does work. 
Uh, most of the work is done on the performance of the FileMaker server and the scalability of the servers that better meets your needs. So we've increased the amount of files that can be hosted on the FileMaker server. It went up from 125 to 256. Uh, the rest area of the work that we've actually done is to make your usage of FileMaker Web Direct better than before. So we've been working on two fronts. One of it was basically cleaning out a lot of issues with uh, our dated system that we had to support with all the version of FileMaker, uh, cleaning out the Java version that we use. So we've migrated from Java 17, where before we were using Java 11, and it's allowed us to actually get a system to be able to support up to 1,000 FileMaker or Direct users. Essentially, this will be working on a Ubuntu Linux environment when you use a load balancer. But even if you're using FileMaker server for the Mac or for Windows server, you'll see a, a, an improvement in the stability and the performance of the system. So we are working on two fronts, more stable uh, systems and a more performant state system. So you'll be able to actually get vaguely between 100 and 120 users per secondary machine, but essentially it will be more stable than before. Uh, to get to those high numbers, we are now supporting Ubuntu 22, uh, working both on Intel and ARM processors. Uh, we've updated as well the Node.js that we use to run the admin APIs and the admin console. So we moved to version 18 and we've added a couple of new logs uh, to make the developer life easier to be able to actually find any information on errors that could be happening uh, on your system. Uh, this is a quick uh, screenshot of the admin console looking at the backup settings. So one of the things that we actually did uh, add to the latest version of FileMaker 19 was the option to be able to cancel a backup. Uh, but due to popular uh, demand and request uh, and feedback from the community, there was a lot of request saying, we want to see sometimes uh, why that, that uh, a cancel happened and we want to be able to actually sort of track that. So we added a new feature where now you will be able to keep your cancel backups in your system so that you could actually decide whether it was a, a manual error or the system error that basically canceled that backup. In terms of the technical spec specification for FileMaker server, so again, for macOS, we support the latest two versions, Ventura 13 and Monterey 12. For Windows, we support Windows Server 2022, both the standard and the data center version, and we support as well Windows Server 2019 both the standard and the data center version. For Ubuntu, we now support Ubuntu 20 and Ubuntu 22. For Ubuntu 20, we only support on Intel processors, uh, but for Ubuntu 22, we'll support both on Intel and ARM processors. You can use both the server or the desktop version of Ubuntu, depending on how you want to install it, uh, but both versions will actually work properly. Uh, again, supporting clients will be FileMaker Pro 20.1, which is FileMaker 2023, FileMaker 19.6, FileMaker 19.5, and 19.4.2. Essentially, is a, any other version before that will not be able to, use, to work uh, due to security purposes because of the update that we've done for OpenSSL to make sure security is better and all the changes that we've done in uh, other third party tools. Uh, we want to restrict basically other versions so that everything is secure and everything works properly. Now, let's uh, quickly have a look at uh, Claris Connect. Uh, so Claris Connect is a great tool to be able to integrate uh, web services with your Pharmac application. So in order to make life easier for developers and to be able to leverage Claris Connect in your Pharmac solution, we've actually created a brand new script step called Trigger Claris Connect Flow. Um, and the information that you have to actually send out is actually quite straightforward. You'll basically give out the URL that you can find in your Claris Connect account and you'll send out some JSON data uh, from your system. And so the JSON data could be enough of any type of field that you have in your system. Uh, the way we've, the reason we've actually done it is essentially was because before we had that script step, in order to send information uh, from FileMaker to Connect, you had to go and create quite a lot of script uh, lines in your scripts. You had to set up variables, you had to create some JSON uh, a JSON payload to send that. You had to use the inside from URLs and pretty much code a lot of, of the environment to be able to actually use the data from FileMaker to the end system. And then now the, the idea is we just this one script step, you can now uh, move your data from FileMaker to the Claris Connect. 
Uh, the one thing on top of it, which is even better than before, is now there is a free tier of Claris Connect. Uh, so if you go to our website uh, and go to the Claris Connect page, you will be able to quickly uh, set up an account on Claris Connect and you'll be able to actually use free of charge. There is no limitation uh, to the platform. So you have you can create as many flows with as many connectors as you want. The only limit is based in terms of API requests that you can do on a monthly basis. Um, and once you've actually got your uh, free tier of Claris Connect set up, all you can do now is actually start uh, integrating your Farmer solution with other systems. So FarmMaker talking to uh, Outlook to be able to send emails or talking to Slack to send messages to your users inside your company or to Twilio to send SMS or any other other thing that can be done with web services out there. So we think it's a, it, it is a great time for you to start leveraging integration to the next level uh, through the use of Claris Connect. Uh, to sign up here, uh, for the free tier, uh, go to this address, content.cloud.com slash getconnect, and that will allow you to actually set it up as quickly as possible. In the near future, we'll have as well a, another Claris uh, FileMaker under the hood webinar, where we'll bring in the Claris engineering team that should take uh, some time in June. Uh, with that, I'm going to basically hand it over to uh, Steve again to talk about some new news uh, for the future of getting it back together. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Doug. And thanks again, Rick, for some great information. Now, before we get to your questions, I have one more announcement, and it's a big one. Our in-person developer conference is making a triumphant return in 2024. Mark your calendars for February 6th through the 8th as we reconvene in person in Austin, Texas, the live music capital of the world. Hopefully, you are all as excited as we are about meeting again in person, and we cannot wait to share more details with you on our website and in Claire's community. It'll be here before you know it. Okay, with that, let's see what questions you have for Rick and Doug. So you guys have plenty of questions for Rick and Doug. So we'll just start here from the top. Uh, this one I think is for Doug. So Doug, on the Windows transaction trigger, can that be used to fire off a connect flow? Thanks, Steve. Yes, actually you can. Uh, the, the information you're gonna uh, uh, gather in, um, in that flow, you can send a JSON data payload that you're gonna send is gonna basically enable you to actually set up a, uh, a trigger uh, directly into um, Claris Connect. So you can grab your data inside uh, your FileMaker app and you can send data out to Claris Connect and it will trigger the flow. Great. Uh, there was another question about Connect since we're on the subject. Can Connect flows call other flows, kind of like FileMaker scripts can call other scripts? I know neither one of you are the uh, product owner for Connect, but can either one of you answer that question? Uh, for the time being, you can't really uh, get a flow to connect to another flow. There's some stuff that we're working around it. Uh, the one thing which is that you already have inside of Connect is once you've actually created a folder, we have multiple flows. All the apps that you've already logged into uh, are stored inside that that folder. So if you need to actually have um, data be moved between sort of different apps, because you're already sort of connected, you're able to create different flows uh, along that, but for the time being, you can't exchange data between different flows. Hey, Doug, uh, I want to uh, jump in here as well. It is, however, something um, that is on our radar and on our backlog. Uh, and we do understand um, the utility uh, of that uh, for sure. Thanks, guys. Um, we had a question about the release of FileMaker Cloud. Uh, you guys mentioned that it was in the near future. Can you elaborate a little bit more on what near future means? Yeah, so of course, um, as part of the FileMaker platform, it also includes FileMaker Cloud. Um, we uh, uh, will we'll definitely have uh, the FileMaker Cloud um, for um, supporting this release and um, expect that uh, late spring, I don't even expect it to bleed into early summer, uh, but in, the, in that time frame. Great. And while we're talking about updates, do we have any time frame for an update to FileMaker Server? 
Uh, yes, yeah, so that yeah. one is, I would say, a couple of weeks. Uh, there's some minor bugs that we fixed around, uh, essentially, WebDirect, a uh, bit of things around on Windows transaction, and we fixed an issue into um, localization of uh, script steps in French. Uh, that was my mistake. I apologize for all French customers. Uh, uh, but yeah, we should be very out very soon. Sounds good. So there were a few questions about performing script on server with the new callback feature. Uh, regarding that, uh, does it work if I, as the user, am doing other things? Uh, yes, it will. So you are essentially when you're actually using that script step, you are going to send uh, the server, the request to one of the server. So you can actually add script parameters and you can do all the great stuff that perform script on server can do. And what the server will do is take off all the work. So the client basically, um, your client no longer knows that basically there is a script running. So it could do anything that it wants. It could actually go back into a different file. It can run other scripts. You can manage the data. You can do, do whatever you need to. And when the, what the server is going to do is once that script being run on the server is finished, it's going to call by the client. So we are giving some information inside the server and it's going to basically tell the client, hey, now run that script. So it will go into the queue. So if you are currently running a, a script on your client, uh, that queued uh, script will stay, in the, uh, will stay in the background. We'll just wait for, for, for its turn to actually be able to actually run. As long as you're connected to the server, uh, you will be able to actually receive that information back from the server to run the script. If you are in the midst of actually reconnecting because you've got actually lost sort of a internet connection or, or network connection, you have the same sort of a time, amount of time that normally the pharmacy keeps in memory, which is roughly about 10 minutes where it kind of waits for the system to make sure that the client is reconnected or disconnected. But if you close the file, there is no way for the pharmacy engine so the engine to know who you are. So it will not actually run the script if you're disconnected. So if you want to make sure that you can actually uh, perform that, you still need to actually have been connected to the server. Okay, thanks, Doug. Uh, Rick, i give this one to you. Uh, somebody asked, how can we connect Claris Studio with FileMaker 2023? Is that possible? At this point, not. That's Claris Pro, but um, it could be a good opportunity for me to address some of the confusion um, that's out there since we launched FileMaker uh, 2023 as it relates to the, the Claris platform, which includes um, connection to studio. Uh, so just to recap what we've presented here about FileMaker 2023, it was primarily focused on making enhancements, targeting professional developers and server admins and designed to allow you to continue to leverage the skills that you have already honed over all the years. And also part of the, um, the um, new naming convention is um, to send the uh, message that we are continuing to deliver advancements to the FileMaker platform. There was some questions and concerns that we weren't investing there, um, but it is the foundation of the Claris platform as well. Um, it, you know, this release has made, as we've said, significant advancements uh, in security, performance, availability, scalability, integration, and we are continuing to maintain the ubiquitous deployment capabilities of the platform. It's a very strong competitive differentiator for us in that often you don't have to say no because you can deploy just about any way and anywhere on almost all devices. Um, and uh, we'll continue to evolve and extend um, our significant integration capabilities, including things like making it easier to um, uh, no pun intended, connect to connect, right? Um, and that's only the beginning of how we're going to make that easier and, and more powerful. So how does that all relate to the, the new Claris platform? First and foremost, the Claris platform is built on top of the FileMaker platform and all of its mature capabilities. Uh, so the foundation of the Claris platform is the FileMaker platform. That's what it's based on. Um, but it brings into a broader platform, this is why we're calling it the Claris platform, both Claris Connect and introduces Claris Studio. 
Regarding Claire Studio, it's our new modern web-based app experience. It allows web forms and other web applications to be built directly in a web browser. And it has two-way um, data interaction between Pro and Studio data. Um, that's on the Claris Pro side of the house. We do understand um, for sure that um, this has caused a splitting of the platform, um, some, um, um, uh, some concern or lack of ability to be able to leverage some of these, these new things. Uh, and just know that we are aware of that and we will solve for that. Um, and so what I'd like to say about uh, in closing, this part of the answer is that FileMaker 2023 really represents a stepping stone release as we continue to build out the capabilities of the Claris platform. Example is the uh, free access to connect with a new script um, to make it easier to, um, to, uh, to uh, leverage connect within FileMaker. And like I said, we will continue to iterate on that and make it more powerful and easier on both sides, on the connect side, as well as the FileMaker side. We will continue to enhance Clara Studio uh, and build out the use cases for the kinds of things that you can do right now. It's, you know, it's pretty good at doing uh, anonymous public facing forms, but that's that's limited and we realize that and there's many more things that we, we, we will do there based on your feedback and input because uh, it's only the beginning. So I just wanted to, um, the, to, to make try to make it clear um, and also um, FileMaker will not go away. We will not take your living away from you. Um, I like to say that we're not that foolish. <laughs> so rest assured, we're here to let you know that we are continuing to invest in the platform that you make your living off of, if that's what you do or part of your living. Um, and uh, I'm here um, as a representative of um, the franchise that we have built over the years that you rely on. Thanks for the very detailed explanation of both platforms, Rick. I know people appreciate that. Um, I think this question might be for Doug. There was a question about if we had some documentation or step-by-step -step directions on how to utilize the OLAF email integration with Microsoft. And other than what we might have in our knowledge base, I understand you might have some insight in some information that might be coming down the road. Uh, yeah, so we are working with our engineering team and our uh, great community team to actually write a blog entry to go through all the steps that we are aware of to actually set up the account on both Microsoft and Google. Uh, the way we're trying to actually write it is sort of having the text and then the, the screenshots. Uh, but we know that depending on the type of account you've actually got set up with one of the providers, some information might actually be different. So we are doing some heavy testing to make sure that we can provide you as, as much information as we can to actually make sure the whole project works properly. Uh, if you look on our community website, there's actually a developer in the United Kingdom who has already set up a, a blog entry on his website to explain to you or explain you how to actually do the setting with Google uh, Workspace. Uh, it's pretty cool, so give it a try. It actually does work for you, uh, but we're trying to actually sort of uh, work on that as quickly as we can so that we can actually give it information. As I mentioned before, is you could auto, otherwise use Claris Connect, uh, especially on the on the Outlook site, using Outlook to be able to uh, do that uh, really quickly. Okay, so we were pretty forthcoming with some information about when the uh, the future of FileMaker Cloud and an update for FileMaker Server. Uh, do either of you have any insight as to when the update for FileMaker Pro might be coming out? Yep, yeah, same timing as server. Um, they'll come together um, in uh, the, the next few weeks. Great. Uh, going back to a question about performing script on server with callback, uh, somebody was asking why it was a separate script step and not combined with what we already had. Uh, yeah, so that one is, um, a way for us to make sure that we weren't going to break anything in your systems. Um, what we did find sometimes is when we actually building a new script step, or we had option to a new script step. That in other cases, maybe in your organization or maybe for the, the people that you're actually doing development work, they might not be on the, the latest version of FileMaker. And so the idea with Go is let's do it separately. Uh, let's work on even though the naming is very similar, 
let's work on them as two different sort of script steps so that on the new script steps, we can have forward and backward compat compatibility uh, without sort of uh, creating any issue for your, for your application. Um, and that way it gives us a bit more freedom on the new script step to come up with new ideas, new option, uh, other information that if we had just everything on the one script step, you would end up with script steps with potentially 10 or, or 20 options. And that would make it sort of kind of a, a bit of a pain to actually use. So we thought let's actually keep them separate so that everything works properly uh, for everyone. That makes sense. Uh, we have a question here about the persistent cache and specifically does enabling persistent cache bypass the consistency check on startup if you have a crash? Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, so the two cache that you're going to have are exactly the same. So one is the old sort of cache system that we have in FileMaker and the other one is a copy of it, but still on the uh, memory of your, of your, of your server. So when it's actually building, it will still basically grab the data from that uh, persistent cache and then make sure the consistency check is done properly and actually reopen the file uh, afterwards. So it's, it's, it's an extra step to make sure that there's less potential data losses or corruption in your, in your system, but it will go through the same processes of uh, making sure that it does the consistent check of all the block the data. Okay. Still scrolling through the list of questions here. I got one about audit logging. Uh, the asker is asking, does the JSON from the script trigger capture related records when you're doing audit logging? So it will, it will capture anything that is in the window that you're looking at. So if you have a uh, portals, it will grab basically the, the table information and all the fields uh, from that table. Uh, that it actually uh, is in the window, so uh, yeah, it will grab sort of information a bit everywhere um, in the in the base environment. Afterwards, the 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 information that comes up from your uh, the field that you want to track, that's really up to you. So you can decide to actually have that information from other tables coming in, or if you don't want to do that, you don't actually have to. But the core elements will actually bring anything from uh, the tables that it can see in that window. All right, I got one more here. Uh, somebody was asking about compatibility and why do we only go back to 19.4.2? Uh, so that's a great one. So, um, in, so you've been using, everyone's been using FileMaker for a long time and the uh, file extension that we currently have, FMP12, started back when we got it, did FileMaker 12. Um, and we do have some third party tools that we use inside uh, FileMaker to get everything working. Some of them are basically outdated and some of them uh, have been updated. Some of them don't really sort of exist that much, but we still support them. And so in order for us to be able to move forward, we have some time to actually remove some of the sort of older versions of third party tools. And uh, which means that we can't support all the versions. So like security wise, uh, we want to make sure that we offer the best security for all our customers. Uh, we are implementing OpenSSL 3.0.8 across the board, uh, but that means that all the versions of, of, of FileMaker won't be able to actually update it with this. So we have to make sure that uh, we kind of get everyone on the latest version of FileMaker. So I know it's a pain in a lot of cases because you can't actually have, or you don't actually have the time to actually do the updates. But for us to be able to actually move the FileMaker product uh, to be more secure, to have new features, we need to sort of remove some all the technologies. Uh, and the only way we can do it is if we only support uh, less versions. So, um, yeah, sometimes it's, it, 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 it's, I know it's a bit of a pain, but in order to actually make a better product, we have sometimes to uh, remove uh, some, some stuff, stuff from the past that uh, doesn't work as well as before. Great. Well, I've been scrolling through the list. I think we've exhausted all of the questions that have been asked. So uh, we're going to wrap it up. So on behalf of Rick, Doug, and myself, we really appreciate your time today, and we hope to see you at the next webinar. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day. Take care.